Hi, I'm Paddu from Free Fin Cal. Today I want to introduce or reintroduce a metric that I had used uh, 11 years ago for mutual fund analysis called the ulcer index. The ulcer index is a measure of downside risk. It uses the uh, drawdowns and it calculates a kind of an average uh, similar to the standard deviation using the uh, drawdowns. The drawdown basically is a uh, measure of how much the mutual fund has fallen from uh, a mutual fund or an index has fallen from a peak. So if you look at the Ulcer Index Wikipedia page, the drawdown is measured like this. It is price minus maximum price divided by maximum price uh, expressed as a percentage. And that's called a uh, one drawdown uh, over a uh, 90 day window that's what i'm using of course uh, other people can use different uh, durations but over 90 days is a very nice smooth window uh, which re removes much of the noise in my opinion and you uh, take all these uh, 90 day uh, drawdown data that is the r1 r2 r3 and so on and you square them so that the negative uh, quantity becomes a positive quantity and then you take the uh, average and you take the square root of the average similar to how a standard deviation is um, defined. So the ulcer index is basically uh, uh, defined as, as this way with and is always positive and what we have done is to evaluate the, an ulcer score. So basically we calculate this uh, uh, ulcer index or, or rolling a nine, uh, uh, ulcer index over a 90 day period. So every 90 days we calculate this ulcer index and we plot it for both the fund as well as an index. And in this graph, uh, the green line is the NAV, the uh, violet line is the NAV. Please don't worry about that. The ulcer index of the Nifty 500 is the orange line that you can see in peaks moving up and down. And the blue line is the ulcer index of the uh, Parak Parak Flexi Cap Fund. You can see that the ulcer index of the fund has always been uh, significantly lower than that of the index, except on uh, one particular uh, period in the uh, couple of years ago. Uh, be, be, besides that, it has always been lower. This means that the fund has always fallen from a peak lower than its benchmark. This means that the stress associated with holding the fund has been significantly lower than that of the benchmark. And that's what why it was called ulcers. In those days before uh, we realized that uh, ulcers were caused by uh, bacteria, people thought it was caused by stress. And uh, that's why it was called as ulcer index. But of course the name stuck and we still use the name. Um, so the it's, ulcer index is a measure of how stressful it is to uh, you know, hold the fund. So we look at the ulcer, we plot the rolling ulcer index over a 90 day period. And we ask how often the ulcer index of the fund was lower than that of the benchmark. Benchmark That's called the ulcer score. And that's what we measure. These kind of graphs and this kind of data can be, uh, if you want to do it yourself, we have the tools for it. We have a um, free FinCal mutual fund analyzer sheet that's part of our free FinCal investor circle. It's a Swiss army knife kind of uh, tool for um, mutual funds. You can do a lot of things with it. Rolling returns, lump sum rolling returns, SIP rolling returns, ulcer index, ro rolling capture, up upside capture, rolling downside capture. Uh, excuse me, rolling upside capture, rolling downside capture. And, and uh, all sorts of uh, uh, analysis can be done with the uh, uh, with the tool. But of course, we are also going to incorporate the ulcer score um, into the uh, free FinCal AUD mutual fund uh, outperformance screener. So every month we'll also be presenting the ulcer score as a way to evaluate for mutual funds. I'll talk about that in another uh, video. So this is for Parak Parak Flexi Cap. If you look at the ulcer score of the Aditya Birla mid cap fund, if you look at this, the mid cap fund ulcer, ulcer index is the blue line, the uh, mid cap uh, 150 index is the orange line. And you can see that the uh, funds ulcer index has always been higher. Typically, it has been higher than that of the benchmark. And uh, um, 
and if you look at the rolling return performance of the fund the fund has typically underperformed the nifty mid cap 150 i am of the strong opinion that um, there is uh, that even for average outperformance you should not have severe uh, underperformance or over uh, overtly high outperformance for average outperformance typically uh, you can also consider an ulcer index that is also consistently uh, lower so if you screen for uh, first you screen for low ulcer index and then you look for average outperformance i think that's if you want to choose active funds that's a reasonable way to uh, look for active funds that is you are not going by returns alone you are looking at how stressful it is it has been for the investor to hold that fund and if that stress is pretty low and if the uh, uh, return outperformance is also reasonable not spectacular it should not be so much like uh, the you know, top one two three or something like that even if it is average the uh if the ulcer index is consistently low and i think then that's a uh, that fund is a reasonable fund to hold if you uh like active funds of course our recommendation of choosing passive funds always holds but that doesn't mean that uh, uh everybody should uh, you know invest only in passive funds that's only a recommendation and many people don't take that recommendation seriously there are many people who invest in active funds as well and this is a reasonable way of choosing uh active funds and this will soon be part of our uh, mutual fund screener bye bye